Farewell to Nova Scotia, the sea-bound coast. Let your mountains dark and dreary be. Nova Scotia at War, 1914-1919. Uh, well, I've been writing books and articles on Canadian military history now for over 20 years and uh, focusing on the First World War and uh, it dawned on me one day that uh, nobody had ever written a book about Nova Scotia in the war and it seemed to me there was an important enough story there that somebody ought to do it. And I thought, well, it could be me as well as anybody else, so I did it. Yeah. And what, uh, what were your takeaways from the experience of the war through Nova Scotian eyes? What, what was uh, unique about it or, or just, you know, significant? Well, aside from the common themes that you would have anywhere in Canada about men volunteering and women going as nurses and all the rest of it, uh, Nova Scotia was unique because it was on the Atlantic coast. And uh, when the uh, submarine war reached uh, the Western Atlantic, uh, and they were shipping, uh, sinking ships. Those ships were sailing out of Sydney and Halifax Harbor and even some of the fishing ports, Lunenburg and Yarmouth and so on. And uh, in the summer of 1918, they sank a lot of ships. And uh, uh, so they, Nova Scotia was in fact physically involved in the war in a way that no other part of Canada was. And, and aside from the stories of the battalions and the men that went over you you tell that side of the story too or is it mainly about the Nova Scotia experience in Canada it's both uh, I talk about the the men who who volunteered went overseas but of course a number of men uh, who volunteered were not allowed to go overseas because there was coastal defense they were very concerned up until 1916 uh, about uh, German ships not submarines yet because they couldn't sail that far, but ships coming in, in and bombarding Halifax, which uh, was a, an important naval port and had a fortress, and Sydney, which was a naval port and a very, very important commercial port because it had the coal mines in Canada, in Eastern Canada and uh, two steel plants. So they needed to be guarded just in case. So uh, there were about 4,000 men who most of whom wanted to go overseas, but weren't allowed to, and so they guarded harbors and other installations. But this is that, but there's also the impact on the home front, of course, uh, the, uh, the uh, industry, um, big munitions industry. In fact, the munitions industry in Canada was actually started um, by the manager of a, of a steel plant in New Glasgow. Most people probably don't know that, but he was, he was the one that really started this shell industry. So there's, there's a whole social aspect and contribution uh, everything. I tried to do everything in the book. <laughs> For when I am far away on the briny ocean tossed, will you ever heave a sigh and a wish for me? Will you ever heave a sigh and a wish?